Hey guys, welcome to RK Keynotes. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure Tomcat server with Java web application. Before getting into the video, if you have not subscribed yet, do subscribe my channel to get more updates. Now let's dive into the video. There are two prerequisites. The first thing is about NetBeans, Apache NetBeans version. Uh, you should use at least 12 and above. So currently I'm using NetBeans 18. This is the latest version. And the second one is Java platforms. Go to tools, Java platforms, and you should use at least JDK 11 and above. So the latest version is 20, which I'm using. If you don't have the uh, current version or 11 and above, you have to download JDK latest version and you have to install it. You can add the platforms here. Okay, fine. Now, uh, let's get into project creation file, new project, and then you have to select Java with an, and then you have to select this. Uh, in the previous uh, modules, we have used Java application. So currently, we are going to play with web applications. So you have to select Java web, and by default, this is selected web application. Select next, and then you have to name your project as. Uh, you can rename if you wish. I'm saying web app demo. And then let's say next. The moment you say next, uh, it will take two to three minutes to activate Java Enterprise Edition for you. So you have to wait. And then it will display nothing over here in the name of server. So you need to add the server here. Before that, uh, we have already installed XAMPP control panel for the previous modules. So we have used Apache Server and MySQL database for JDBC connection and swing in the previous videos. So currently, I'm going to experiment with Tomcat Server, okay, for this particular module. So so that I don't want to install extra software again. Fine, I'm just going to use XAMPP control panel. Okay. Now also we know that uh, most of the people would have installed XAMPP control panel in C drive. Fine. So you can see that local disk C and XAMPP holder, and this is the location of our server, Tomcat server. So if you have installed in D drive or any other drive, then you should map it accordingly. Now I'm just going to click on this add button and it is going to show me a few servers. I'm going to select Apache Tomcat and then next. Here you have to specify the server location, which I have just uh, shown you, the path C drive. And you have to say XAMPP, you have to open XAMPP folder, and then there you have to select Tomcat and then select open. That's it. So right now it is throwing this warning because I have already configured it. That's why it is so displaying this warning. And you have to mention the username, it can be your name, or simply write root and then have a, a short password. The moment you enter the password, it shows finish. I mean, it enables the finish button for you. Just click finish button. As I have already configured, it is not enabling the finish button for me. So once you click this finish button, you can see the server name here. And then this Java EE version is 7. If you want to downgrade, you can downgrade, but we stick to 7. And this is my context path, means my project path, my folder name. And then next. So right now, don't select any of the frameworks. Of course, we are going to learn frameworks in the upcoming chapters. So don't select anything over here. Just click on finish. So once you do this, you will get this project folder like web app demo. And we need to understand two main folders here. The first one is web pages and the second one is source packages. Inside the source packages, I'm going to create servlets. Right now it is empty. So in web packages folder we have two main folders means subfolders uh, meta information and web information in meta information we always have something called context.xml so this is the xml header you can see the xml version and uh, encoding that unicode transformation format eight bits um, you know that it can store different characters of different languages fine more than one like characters can be stored we have already discussed about this and uh, now the context path is my project name fine uh, the location of my project name 
So always in every project, every single project which we create, this context information will be there, context XML file. XML is for extensible markup language. It is a plain text document, uh, which consists of text data and also tags, XML tags. All right. Now, uh, web information right now i'm just opening it it is empty because uh, in this web information folder we're going to have a file called as uh, web.xml file that file will get created only if you create the servlets fine so which we are going to do in a moment before that let's see what is this index.html whenever you create a empty web application so it will create an index.html file by default and uh, here you can see that there are some basic HTML tags. So here you can specify uh, the required HTML tags. Like if you want to create a registration form or else login form, something like that. If you want to use button, text box, and sort of images, you have to mention those uh, HTML codes over here, which we're gonna do it do it from the next video onwards. Uh, this is just a, a experimental video of how to create the web application and how to set up tomcat all right now and let's create a servlet file now right click on source packages you can do that so you can select servlet or else you can right click on default packages you can do the same new and you have to select servlet so basically servlets we are going to use to create dynamic web applications fine so and then the servlet name if you wish you can change select next and this step is most important you have to check this checkbox over here add information to deployment descriptor web.xml basically what deployment descriptor uh, will do is that it will take these information like class name servlet name url pattern and all those things during runtime fine and initialization parameters uh, you can't directly say int a equal to 10 something like that but uh, if you want to initialize something like name of the variable and value then you should go with init parameter tag okay so this will be converted as a tag by default so for that you can go over here and you can specify the name and value fine as of now i'm not going to do this and then let me say finish the moment i click finish it will create a web.xml file for me let's see that finish yeah you can see that this web.xml file got created now this is basically web.xml file consists of the configuration informations of servlets if you can create a number of servlets here all the servlet files means uh, its class name a servlet name and url pattern name everything will be configured here basically this is a configuration file okay of servlets and its information so here uh, let's uh, look into this web.xml file now again we have this uh, xml header and then we have uh, three most important tags inside this web app tag so the first tag is servlet and then the second tag is servlet mapping and then the third tag is uh, this one session config okay so within this web app uh, the servlet name and servlet class tag was there and within servlet uh, servlet name and url pattern name will be there uh, if you wish you can change the url pattern name like it will not uh, display new servlet in the url instead you can say abc it will it is going to display abc in the url fine and then this is about session so you can specify some time here like 30 minutes 40 minutes 15 minutes so whatever you want so basically this is about and this one this is a uh, dtd information we call it as document type definition so where it has the attributes and configuration and i mean the url mappings will be there fine all right now let's understand how this is going to work mm, as i said that uh, this is the xml header that xml version will be there and this is uh, the dtd information document type definition and the entire thing starting from web app to the uh, a servlet mapping we have all the tags and basically this is about the servlet information so within that we have uh, all the configuration information like servlet name and class and init parameter if you have specified the parameter name and value and which is going to create a tag for for us like this 
and servlet mapping, which consists of URL and servlet name. So this is about web.xml file. All right. Now let's see how this works. So if suppose that now this is my host name and then this hello servlet is my project name and this is my URL for a particular servlet, say hello. Okay. Now what happens? This uh, URL actually the basically this servlet file is a java file right so the class file will get copied during runtime i'm talking about the class file will get copied to this web server that is tomcat here and then the web server will look for that particular uh, project name that is the hello servlet and then what happens let me show you that the first step is uh, the class file will get copied into this tomcat i mean the web server and then means tomcat's location and then the the server will just try to fetch the context path of the folder project folder and then it directly communicates with the web.xml file means it fetches the web.xml file because in web.xml file we have all the information about the configuration information about servlets right and then what happens it try to access the url pattern it try it and then it tries to access the class the particular class of the servlet fine so that it goes to the particular folder and then it will access now in this we would have written some logic right uh in the servlet file so that logic will get executed and then you will see the output again so this is the uh you know steps like how your entire web server and then how your tomcat and then how your class file got read by the web server so now let's go back to this now let me run this if you wish to run a particular servlet you can right click on the servlet and you can run the file or if you wish to run uh, let's say let me do some changes here in web.xml i'm just uh, going to say something like okay now i want to run this whole project so whenever you run this whole project, the first thing is it, it executes this index. I mean, uh, it starts from index.html file after reading this web.xml. So right click on the project name and then say run. The moment you say run, your Tomcat server will get started. You can see that you, you should remember the username and then password and then you have to provide accordingly. And then you have to click OK. The moment you say OK, you will get the output here. And now we can see that localhost 8080 is the port number for Tomcat, default port number for Tomcat. And then this is my context path, means my project name. And then it is displaying something from the HTML file, right? And then if, if I would have done something uh, in servlet and all, so I can do some actions and then I can display something from the servlet file as well. So which we are going to do in the upcoming videos, right? So hope you understood that how to configure tomcat server and how to start with web application if you like the video hit the like button thank you and thanks for watching the video